Hey everybody, welcome to Escapod September Q&A. It's been a few months, so <laughs> sorry for the delay. Um, summer is most certainly our busy season, and uh, as some of you might know, staffing is challenging right now in the United States of America, and there is no exception here in Colville, Utah. Uh, we're lucky to have the amazing team that we do have, but it's been a little lean. Um, we did manage to make one very key hire though in the last few months um, that is a gentleman sitting with me today and i'm excited to introduce him to you all his name is corey schultz um, he came to us with a ton of experience in manufacturing and has been a, a joy to work with over the last 90 days we realize we hit the 90 day mark um, so corey before we dive into everything can you just tell the audience a little bit about you your previous work experience yeah, so I've got about 25 years in uh, manufacturing management. Uh, really, I focus on uh, streamlining and continuous improvements and really just trying to remove obstacles from employees and have a, a focus on the customer experience. And that's really what I've dedicated my life to in the last 25 years. It's been fun. So where were you prior to joining Escapod? Uh, I was with a great company. The company's name is uh, Sarah Wire. A uh, wonderful company to work for. Uh, I had a lot of really good teachers in Sarah Wire and throughout Mormon. Uh, so yeah, it was a great experience, great people there. Uh, but uh, transitioning to here just gave me an opportunity to really uh, dive in and uh, and try something different. Uh, one, I really believe in, in the, the vision of Escapod. I love the, the concept of being able to help people get out in nature and with these things get in places you normally can't get to in, in a travel trailer. And so I, I'm big on family. Uh, I've been married, happily married for over 21 years, three great, great kids, uh, three dogs, and we love to get out in the outdoors. And if I can help other people get there, uh, I, I, it's a passion of mine to do so. Um, so. You came in um, to a young manufacturing organization um, grown by a group of very passionate but not super experienced people in terms of really optimizing for a scaled production operation. Um, so we kind of tasked you with a, a big job and can you just share a little bit about what you've been focused on in your, in your first 90 days and then maybe what you plan to tackle in your next 90 days? Yeah, so the first 90 days was just really trying to take a lot of the individual steps out and create processes. Instead of managing all these different topics, uh, I believe in managing processes. Uh, we implemented something called Squidic. It's really focused on safety, quality, delivery, and cost. Uh, it's really what I believe in. Keep your people safe, focus on quality, get the, the trailer to the customer, and then work on uh, cost after that. And so over the first little while, we, we brought on somebody that's dedicated to safety and facilities. Uh, we started developing structure and uh, consistency. Uh, we have work instructions, the rough draft of work instructions uh, were completed throughout the entire process. So uh, uh, definitely having, having fun diving in and really learning all the integral parts of uh, building a trailer so that everybody knows what they're doing. And then we dived in, dove into uh, working with our supply chain and really diving, diving into not only our customers or our suppliers, uh, how they service us, but also how their suppliers service them. So uh, really trying to just bring overall stability and consistency throughout the process and then improve uh, efficiencies as we move forward. Um, so the SQUIDIC acronym uh, is one that you presented to us pretty early on and even in your interview process. Um, can you just expand a little bit more on um, what that means in terms of uh, how we make decisions in our organization. Yeah, so any, any of the manufacturing people out there will, will know all about it, but really what it is is, um, you know, you, you can make decisions that go, that favor an acronym before it. So uh, if, 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 you're, if, you're, uh, if you're focusing on a quality decision and we, it impacts delivery, then that's a decision that, that we can make because no customer wants to get a poor quality product. Um, you cannot make a quality decision that negatively impacts safety. So first and foremost, we wanna start our week with safety, end our week with safety. So we really stay focused on safety at the beginning and then uh, we have a program called 6S. A lot of people are familiar with 5S. Uh, we add safety to that. And then, uh, and then uh, quality, 
is uh, making sure that we're doing everything that we need to do and we have the, the structures and processes in place in order to be successful. Uh, again, we can't move on to that next phase of delivery until we make sure we have a good quality product. And once we're hitting delivery and we're hitting customer expectations, uh, then we can, which is the next step, is making sure that we're uh, improving the, the customer experience and getting trailers to the customer in, in a reasonable amount of time and then work on costs at that point, uh, which just kind of continue to figure out, can we lower the price point or can we uh, improve the, the quality of the trailer uh, by, by making some changes or continuous improvements. And throughout that process, the goal is to remove obstacles uh, that are that everybody's facing. It's, the goal is to remove obstacles from the, the line operator, from ownership, from our suppliers, from the way we interact, from the way we interact to our customers. I just really streamline that entire process. Awesome. Um, there's more questions for you later on in terms of production, um, but we'll we'll get into the questions that you guys submitted. And if you have more as you're watching, feel free to add them in in the comments or I don't know wherever you do that. So right. Okay. And then behind the screen is Jess as always. So she's holding down the fort and is going to lead us through the rest of today's questions. Perfect. So we've broken the questions that you guys have submitted into categories. We're going to start with original taco. First question that kind of came in, it's the big one, it's the big elephant in the room. Uh, why did we discontinue the original taco? Can you guys speak to that? Yes. Um, this was a really hard decision to make uh, and one that we really tried to do our best to remove emotion from um, and make a, a decision that is best for the business and ultimately best for what we were seeing um, from our customer base and what they wanted. Um, if it were an emotional decision, I would still be making the original taco. Um, I absolutely love that trailer and uh, I, I'm, I'm savoring every moment that I get to see them here still being built and, and on our lot as we deliver the final 60 or so um, that we have left to build. Um, but ultimately it just came down to a question of, of our mission and really what we're trying to do as a company. Um, as Corey talked about with, with Squidic, like that is a, a, a philosophy that helps us make decisions. Um, and our mission is to build the best damn camper known to man. Um, the original Topo is an incredible trailer. It is a well-built trailer in terms of wood and aluminum constructed trailers. It is still one of the best out there, if not the best out there. So it's kind of like an elite athlete retiring when they're at the peak of their career, right? Like, why would you do that? Um, and we do, we kind of want to go out at the top um, and be able to continue focusing on producing the best trailers that we can. We thought we could manage two production lines internally and it just added a lot of complexity and stress and confusion in terms of priority for, for our team. Um, it's two totally different uh, supplier lists, so it's more parts to deal with, it's more vendors to deal with. Um, it's a whole different build process, so it's different tooling, it's a different shop layout, it's additional warehouse space, uh, and space is, <laughs> whew, we need more space. <laughs> we just expanded into 20,000 square feet and it's already not enough space. Um, so all of those factors really challenged us to ask if we were doing everything we could internally to, to live up to our goal. Like, we don't think we've arrived yet. We, our mission is to build the best damn camper known to man, and we are doing everything we can to position ourselves to do that um, and to be able to do something new and that has never been done. Um, it is definitely bittersweet, more on the bitter side <laughs> than the sweet side to sunset the original Topo, but truly for our business, it was just the right decision to make. Uh, we do outline a few more details and specifics of that on our blog as well. So if you haven't seen that, um, head over to our blog and Jess will link to that or something. I don't know. I like say all these things that I think she can do. It's like magic. Um, but that's a good resource as well, as well if you're looking for more details. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think manufacturability is another one in, in our ability to scale. Uh, we, we need to be able to grow as customer demand grows and that's really important to us. So we want to make sure that we can have a streamlined process in our factories and the top of, the top of one is a little bit more labor intensive to, to build and takes a lot more skill to build. Uh, the manufacturability is a lot more streamlined with the top of 
not too good. Anything else? No. Okay. Well, we're going to piggyback off that just a little bit. Okay. Um, there's been a couple questions that have come in about the support of the original taco with the sun setting. There's just been a little bit of concern there. Can you speak to how our service and warranty team will handle original taco claims moving forward? Absolutely. Um, so service will always be available for any escapade that you own. Um, that said, the current limitation on service is your proximity to Utah um, for, for service-based requests. So what we mean by that is you've just seen normal wear and tear on your trailer over time, or um, you, know, you broke something or you crashed your trailer into something and you need it fixed, you need it worked on, but it's not something that would be covered under the one year warranty. So for service requests, we have no plans to stop servicing an original topo at any point in time. You can always schedule a service and we will work on your on your trailer. Um, we are also working to expand our service coverage beyond Utah, but that's gonna be uh, a little ways out. Um, now in terms of warranty, so on the original topo, it is a one year warranty. That warranty starts from the day that you pick up your trailer. So it's not, you know, if we have a six month lead time, you're not using six months of your warranty while you're sitting in the build queue. Um, and that's a manufacturer's warranty. We are generally speaking, extremely generous in terms of what we are willing to cover um, with warranty. We take quality very seriously and we take accountability really seriously. So if we haven't delivered on our end of the bargain, we're gonna work with you to make sure that we're, we're getting it right and that we're making things um, acceptable on your trailer so that you can be very happy with it for the long term. Um, that once the last original topo is delivered, we are not extending those warranty coverages. So that will expire a year after the last original topo, um, is picked up, but we will continue to service a trailer. Did I answer that completely or were, was there a part of that question I missed? No, it was just mainly um, curious if that service would ever end and if there was a timeline on that, but from that service will not end and we'll continue to service your trailer as needed. Yeah. And I would say, you know, with the service, one thing that will change right now, we have original topo parts sitting on our shelves at all times. So, um, if somebody makes a last minute request for service, we can usually accommodate that because we have those parts on the, on the shelf. We won't have as many parts on our shelf. Uh, for original topo once we stop manufacturing it. Um, so it may take a little bit of time, just you know, work with us, communicate in advance as soon as you know you, you're looking for something um, and we'll do our best to, to get you in and take care of you. Awesome, well, those are all the original topo questions that came in, so we'll move to topo two. Um, big question is how is the topo two production process in the current timeline of production looking right now? So right now we've got a trailer. Last month we had a trailer coming off the line uh, about one a week. Uh, this month we're transitioning to two a week. So we, we definitely made some improvements, uh, really staffed the lineup, got a lot of our new team members trained, got the work instructions in place. So we're definitely moving forward there. Uh, we plan to continue to improve as we move forward. Uh, as far as the time from the time it enters the, the process to the time it exits, uh, right now we're, we're looking at probably uh, right around probably 20, 20 days in that process. Um, that was kind of the follow-up question of that. It's how many are getting completed each week. Um, do you want to talk about what that process looks like in the future, like what we're working towards, what our goals are moving forward on a weekly basis? Yeah, definitely. With, with the way this uh, unit is, is streamlined, uh, it's very simple. There's a lot of CNC programming work that goes into it as opposed to uh, manual you know, measuring and cutting with a saw and things like that. We, we have two CNC machines that are really helping us drive this thing forward. So we anticipate two trailers a day uh, here within the next you know, six months and then four trailers a day shortly after that once we get the, the cadence down. And we, we've got it mapped out, you know, how many people it's going to take, we know what our layout needs to look like in order to make that happen. And so right now we're working on supply chain and getting our team members up to speed. Awesome. Uh, we had a question come in about, are we going to be showing the Taco 2 in Southern California anytime soon? 
Maybe. Maybe we need a winter trip to Southern California. Um, I don't think we have anything on the calendar right now. We'll be in Lake Tahoe this coming weekend, Saturday and Sunday, for the Adventure Van Expo. Um, Corey sounds like he's taking a road trip to, to SoCal. Um, I don't believe we currently have an event on our schedule. Am I correct in saying that, Jess? That's correct. Our next probably Southern California would probably be Sea Otter of next year. Yeah, well, I think we could probably... Our hope is to have a Topo 2 on the road a little bit more. See, then I get on these things and then I commit to things publicly and then I have to be held accountable. <laughs> um, so uh, I think we can work on that. SoCal is definitely an area uh, that we, we have a lot of customers in that area. So I'd love to get a Topo 2 down that way. And I know like Monterey is like, it's not SoCal. <laughs> like it's California, it's the same thing. It's like very long coastline. It's a very long coastline. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another question came in about Topo 2. Uh, what number are you currently at in the queue for Topo 2 for our customers that are curious? 13. 13. Yes. 13 is in build. Yep. <laughs> um, well, those are all the Topo 2 questions. Did you guys want to elaborate on anything regarding Topo 2 anymore before we move on to some general questions? Uh, just being new to the team, one thing I've been really impressed with is uh, Jen and Chris have taken that Topo 2 out on the road. and. You guys got you know 30,000 miles on the thing and that thing's holding up like a champ it's a solid trailer just really proud to, to be a part of the team and yeah and to help build that thanks corey we're excited to take some more winter trips in it i've got plans to go on a ski trip with tapo 2 this winter so we'll go to the beach and then we'll go to the snow <laughs> <laughs> the yeah exactly <laughs> okay well we'll move into some general questions um, have you guys ever mounted a hitch to accommodate a bike rack on the back of the trailers? We sure have. Um, it's one of our favorite ways to transport bikes because it doesn't um, add to the tongue weight of your trailer by putting it on top of the of the tongue box, though that I, I've seen people do that as well. Um, but the Topo 2, you do have to add the rear hitch receiver. That's an add-on option for Topo 2. It was standard on the original Topo, uh, but because we made that um, a separate add-on, it's actually bolt on to the frame, we were able to kind of beef it up a little bit. So we increased the overall weight rating um, from that the location of that hitch pin. So you're up to 350 pounds at 18 inches out from that hitch receiver pin. Um, and then 250 pounds at 36 inches out. So you can carry two bikes very easily, uh, four bikes as well. Um, we've had some customers also put on a, a rear swing gate so you can open that bike rack uh, and still access your hatch. Um, and then as always, we have our side receiver tubes on the fender so you can move that bike rack and put it on the fender step to get it out of the way of the hatch as well once you're at camp. Uh, can either one of you speak to the uh, benefits of having a rooftop tent on top of your, your job trailer? Oh, I know I'm going to uh, take a trailer out this weekend. Uh, I'm looking forward to it and we wanted the rooftop because I've got a larger family. i got a little granddaughter that uh, we want to make sure that she can hang out with us. We're going to get the granddaughter's parents upstairs and uh, they'll go into the tent and uh, my wife and I and my granddaughter, I may get kicked out for the dog, we'll see if Harvey <laughs> replaces me or not. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just a way to expand uh, the number of people that can, en that can enjoy the experience. Awesome. Um, does the cooler fridge slide out come pre-wired for power? Yes, there's a 12 volt, 12 volt power supply on the back of that. Awesome. Um, what is the dream tow vehicle for the Topo 2 in you guys' minds, and how did the Ford Ranger do on the long cross-road, cross-country road trip that we went on? Um, oh my gosh, the dream tow vehicle? That yeah. is, that is hard to answer. Um, so I have, I mean, yeah, I don't know how to even answer that i love towing with the bronco yeah I think um, it's awesome with the, bronco. <laughs> uh, the people at bronco nation they have one yeah uh the, the color scheme looks really good I mean, it, yeah it looks good behind the bronco. and we have the the two seven uh i 
I say that like I know what that means. I think it's something to do with the engine size. So it's the more powerful Bronco of the Broncos out there. Um, and you don't even notice the pod behind it at all. Um, all Top O2s come with the free ride suspension as well. So it just, it tows really smooth. Um, it does beat up the gas mileage a little bit on the Bronco. It's kind of a, a guzzler, but uh, the towing experience is really nice. Um, the Ranger also did really well. Um, I towed an original Topo with the Ranger recently and a Topo 2, and I could notice quite a bit of difference actually in terms of how it tows. Uh, we haven't done a ton of like of our own like aerodynamics testing or what goes into that, but lighter tongue weight and everything I think made a, a big difference there. Um, the smaller pickup trucks are also a really nice towing option, depending on your family size. It's nice to have the back of a pickup truck to load up like bulky camp items, um, things like a solo stove if you're traveling with a solo stove. So in terms of like dream vehicles, a small pickup like a Ranger is also really great. I prefer a Ford engine and how a Ford drives better than a Toyota Tacoma. Um, sorry, Chris Eckle, uh, but the Tacoma looks really nice towing a Tapo 2 as well, but I feel like I like driving the Ford better. Well, we may have to throw it behind uh, my, my, my son-in-law, hey Jose, I have a Tacoma. <laughs> we may have to hook it up to that and, and see how the burrito does with it. <laughs> we'll do some tow vehicle challenges. Yeah, the Ranger, the Ranger did get better mileage than the Bronco, but the Ranger has the smaller engine and just generally speaking gets better gas mileage than the Bronco well, so we've had people show up with Subarus and, and as long as you can tow that weight uh, even those tend to do well from the feedback that I've gotten mm -hmm. perfect uh, there was a question that came in that if we have had a recent change of ownership wanna... have we had a recent change of ownership yeah um we have not had a recent change of ownership <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy one. Yeah, I I would say I yeah I don't know where that question is coming from, so I should probably not try to guess where it's coming from. Um, but it's still the four uh, partners: Chris Eckel, my husband Chris Hudak, myself, and then Joshy Fishbein. Um, the four of us are still driving the ship, um, but we are growing and we are bringing in higher level hires, people like Corey to help us really dial things in. Um, so organizationally, we are going through some changes and shifts. So if this is a question as to, you know, if you're feeling like it's a different company today, we are trying to be a different company. Um, I think there's been some questions about, you know, our, our company and it was a better company when it was small. And well, we wouldn't be employing 70 people right now if we chose to be small. We wouldn't be creating career opportunities in a rural town in Utah um, if we chose to stay small. And some days I wish we chose to stay small too uh, because growing a company is really hard, it turns out. Um, but we're really committed to what we're doing and um, I hope that we can maintain that small company feel and that we do um, our best to stay on top of things like customer service across the board. Um, but access to owners is probably less today than, than it was a few years ago and will probably be less tomorrow than it was today. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're any less invested in the company and our employees and our customer base and, and our mission of what we're doing. And just get a comment back about <laughs> dream tow vehicles. Um, <laughs> Tater, who is an original Tapa owner, would like to state that um, they're a Tacoma owner and it feels <laughs> like a So, Sorry. Perhaps, <laughs> we might have to have a challenge to see which tow vehicle is our dream tow vehicle. But. I like it. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you want to see that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Last call for additional questions from all of you that have joined us today. Um, and if we don't get any, do you guys have any things that you'd like to add to finish us out? Just, just one thing on the growth. One, I'm glad you did, or I, I may be unemployed right now. Uh, so, uh, but, but the other half of that is one thing that I really like about uh, Escapod is is their their vision of who they support. Uh, we genuinely want a partnership with our with our suppliers, we want to support them, we want to make sure they're successful, 
to make sure that we have stability throughout the organization. Uh, we need to make sure that we're taking care of our employees. So they're doing a great job trying to move things forward to make that happen, remove obstacles, make their, their workspaces more efficient and, and a joy to work at, uh, as well as getting engaged with the community. I think that's the biggest thing that I think we're going to start diving into as the company continues to grow. I mean, I just had a, a meeting with the local high school uh, just yesterday talking about, you know, how can we work together to to better impact the community. So I think growth definitely, you know, has some 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 cons, you know, not as much access to, to your team, but I think overall, I think it really is impacting uh, both the environment that we work in, as well as uh, allowing people to go to places and camp in a trailer that it wouldn't be able to without Mr. Fox. So I'm pretty excited about it. Thanks, Corey. I do have one more question coming in. Oh. Uh, what colorways are most people ordering on the Chopper 2? Uh, by far, it's, it's the storm and then either a black or a, or a red door. I don't know why people aren't ordering the white with the black door like that. The it's white is going to look gonna nice. Awesome. I am really excited to get our first white trailer. It's in, in the queue. We're, we're getting there. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting there. Whoever it was, well done. We're looking forward to your trailer. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the storm with the obsidian door looks nice too. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the Midnight Fire is a nice com uh, combination in kind of our classic colors. But. Moss and black. Moss and mm. obsidian door also. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty common, but it looks good. Confirmation says they volunteer to have one in white if you'd like. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's do it. That would look really good. <laughs> and uh, Brittany Fitzgerald, one of our um, employees, said that it was to listen to you guys chat while she worked today and loves Escapade and Aww. that's what it brings to her life. That's amazing. Thanks, Thanks Brittany. Brittany. That was a great we job. We appreciate you. Okay, I haven't seen any more questions filing through or comments, so we're gonna that's a wrap. wrap up. Here yeah, then... oh, go visit our online store. You can buy Escapade <laughs> merch. Yeah, even it's all, actually all on know. there. This may not be, no, this is an employee, so oh, I, is I, I, I get special sale? privileges. We got, we got all sorts of shirts, so go shopping and hats and sweatshirts for the cold weather because fall is here. It's the best. Beautiful plug <laughs> for the end of our Q&A here. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and we'll be back here soon for another one, so get your questions ready. In the meantime, if you guys ever have questions, always feel free to email us at podpros at escapod.us. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye.